introduction from the princeton alumni weekly of january thirtieth nineteen eighteen it is now seven weeks since the dispatches from paris reported that stuart walcott was attacked by three german airplanes and brought down behind the german lines after he himself had brought down a german plane in his first combat on december twelfth nineteen seventeen and that it was feared he had been killed but even now after the lapse of nearly two months it is not definitely known whether his fall proved fatal or whether the earnest hope of his friends that he is still alive may be realized the reports are conflicting a cable message of january seven said that in germany it was reported that s walcott had been killed by a fall on december twelve near st souple but dr walcott received a letter on january nineteen which holds out some hope that the fall was not fatal and that his son may be a prisoner in germany this letter dated september seventeenth is from a young aviator named lochran who was stuart walcott's roommate at the flying station he gives this report of what was told to him by an observer and pilot who saw the combat on the twelfth of december at eleven thirty a m there were five pilots to go out on high patrol including stuart and myself but i was prevented from going because of a wrenched ankle stuart and the other pilots left here at eleven forty a m for high patrol which means they are to fly above the thousand meters two of the pilots had to return because of motor trouble leaving one pilot whom stuart was following at twelve fifty a m they ran across a german biplace machine the french pilot attacked first but had to withdraw because of trouble with his machine gun he reports that the spod stuart walcott's machine that had been following him he last saw a thousand meters above him or the german also that the german had gone back over his lines the infantry and artillery observers report the french pilot's attack in combat and that six minutes later the german returned over our lines and that the spa that was seen flying at a very high altitude came down and attacked the german and succeeded in bringing him down in flames in doing so he had to fly quite a way over the german territory and that the spot had started to return when three german fighting machines were seen diving on him and forcing him down the spot was last seen doing a nose dive perpendicular behind their lines that is all the information i have received up to date this is what makes all the boys think that stuart is alive a nose dive perpendicular is used very often in combat but is very dangerous as it is very difficult for one to come out of and yet have their motor running that reason might force him to land also there was very little chance for him to get away from them by flying as they were above and the only sensible thing to do was to land and as we were only three days in this sector the french think that he might have been mixed up as to the direction for home or that he was slightly wounded and could not turn his machine toward the french lines i have tried every possible way to get information about stuart i have sent the numbers of his motor and machine to major s unintelligible who is trying to trace it through the red cross service one of the french pilots of this esquadrille who is a very good friend of your boy shot down a german biplane on thirteenth of december the machine fell behind our lines the pilot was dead before reaching the ground but the observer was only slightly wounded so the boys of that esquadrille have asked the commander of the group if we could be permitted to go and talk to the german as he may know something about the spa that fell behind his lines the day before we hope to know whether he will be permitted to do so or not tomorrow it takes two months before we receive the report from germany officially in the meantime you will read all sorts of reports in the newspapers but i will cable or have captain peter bowl do so by getting the news that is true the case of buckley the american who fell september fifth was reported as being in flames from five thousand meters down and fell in german territory the observers reported that it landed on its back and burned completely his parents were notified of his death newspapers reported the terrible death he died well sir on november twenty fifth we received a letter from him saying he was enjoying the best of health and was satisfied with his surroundings in the prison camp in germany so we are all hoping the same for stuart 
i have all stuart's personal things and will give them to captain bold the first chance i get mr walcott it is beyond words for me to try and tell you how grieved we all are about stuart and how great a loss it is to the esquadrille for him to be away he was more than liked by every member and officer and gave promise of doing great things was always up in his machine trying to better himself in combat flying there was never a minute that he was idle if it was possible for him to fly and never a more generous and kinder boy only the night before the patrol he last went out on he gave me every care in the world got up during the night to make sure i was comfortable and to do anything he could for my ankle from one who has been with stuart through all his training and roommate on the front yours respectfully e j lochran this letter was written before the cable dispatch of january seventh from the international red cross which seems to establish definitely the fact that stuart walcott gave his life in support of the endeavor to make the world safe for democracy in further and final evidence a letter dated february fifth nineteen eighteen informed dr walcott that the red cross agent in paris had reported stuart walcott's grave has been found an accompanying map from Lochran shows the spot where stuart walcott fell is on a hill a little south of st souple benjamin stuart walcott was of new england ancestry his earliest known american forebear was captain jonathan walcott of salem massachusetts sixteen sixty three through sixteen ninety nine later one of captain jonathan's descendants benjamin stuart walcott served in a rhode island regiment during the revolutionary war on his mother's side two ancestors served in the continental army and in the revolutionary war end of introduction from above the french lines from princeton to france Stuart Walcott was a senior at Princeton in the winter of 1916-1917. In view of his approaching graduation in the spring, his father wrote to him that he had best begin to think about what he was going to do after graduation, in order that he might get on an independent basis as soon as practicable. In response, under date of January 7, 1917, he wrote, You spoke of my being independent after I graduate in the spring if i go to europe as i want to to drive an ambulance or in the aeroplane i will be doing a man's work and shall be doing enough to support myself if the work is unpaid it is merely because it is charitable work and as such is given freely if you want to pay my way i will consider it not as dependence on you father but as a partnership that may help the allies and their cause i will furnish my services and you the funds to make my services available if not, I will be willing to invest the small amount of capital which has accumulated in my name. I have been thinking of this work in Europe for over a year now, and am still very strong for it. I don't know what the effect will be on myself, but if it will be of service to others, I think that is something I ought to do. Being assured that the expenses would be provided for, he then began an investigation as to the best method of procedure to obtain training as an aviator in a letter dated january twenty sixth he said many many thanks for sending me the book on the french flying corps by winslow i read half of it the night that it came and stayed up late last night to finish it it gives a very straight interesting and apparently not exaggerated account of the work over there which has made it somewhat clearer to me just what it is that i want to get into now i am even more anxious than i was before to join the service over there the more that I think about it, and the more that I hear of it, the more desirous I am of getting into the flying corps. If a man like Winslow, with a wife and daughter dependent on him, is willing to take the risk involved, I see no reason why I should not. You mentioned the ambulance service in your last note. I've thought of that quite a little, and would definitely prefer the aviation. The ambulance is worthwhile, I think, and that it gives one an opportunity to be of great service to humanity but not so much as the other. There will be a number of my classmates who will enlist in the American ambulance this spring, but the air service appeals to me. He then made arrangements with the American representatives of the Lafayette Esquadrille to go to France on the completion of his college year. On January 29th he wrote, 
i will get a physical examination in a few days in regard to getting the training over here first i do not think it would be worth while the instruction over there would be first hand bright for a definite purpose and on the whole superior to what i could get here i could also be picking up the language and the hang of the country at the same time on february twenty fourth he received word that his papers presented with his application for admittance to the franco-american flying corps assured him on their face of a welcome when he presented himself in paris he was informed that if he utilized his spare time in availing himself of any and every opportunity to familiarize himself with flying it would shorten his stay in the student aviator school in france on march twenty sixth he wrote i haven't been able to find out anything definite about the school at mineola as yet no change has been announced to my knowledge in reference to hastening up the course in event of the coming war over a hundred men have left college princeton already to start training for the mosquito fleet and the rest of them are drilling every afternoon what do you think of the advisability of stopping college and going to some aviation school considering that it takes several months to become at all useful as an aviator and the war is practically inevitable now i think it would be wise to get started right away and again on april the third i saw in the morning paper that the american flyers in france would be transferred to american registry immediately after the declaration of war when you next see general squire i wish you would sound him on the probability of a force being sent to france to learn to fly according to french methods this is the one thing above all others that i want to get into if there is any chance of that i do not want to get involved in anything else it is quite certain that seniors who leave college now to go into military work will receive their degrees i would not object to losing the work as it is not my present intention to keep on with theoretical chemistry and that is what i am devoting my time to this spring from the standpoint of education alone i think that my time could be more profitably spent in the study of aviation leave was granted by the university and on april sixth stuart walcott was appointed a special assistant to mr sidney d waldron inspector of aeroplanes and aeroplane motors signal service at large he immediately reported to mr waldron and worked with him through april may first he went to newport news virginia may second he reported my first trip up was this afternoon with victor Carlstrom. we were out sixteen minutes and climbed three thousand five hundred feet it was all very simple getting up there a little wind and noise and some bumps and pockets in the air a glorious view of the harbor then we started to come down first i saw the earth directly below through the plains on the left then the horizon made a sudden wild lurch and newport news appeared directly below on my right this continued for a little while and then we started down at an angle of about thirty degrees to the perpendicular turning as we went i later learned that karlstrom had executed a few steep banks or sharp turns and then spiraled down it ended with a very pretty landing following with a series of banks to check speed flying from my first impression is a very fascinating game and the one i want to stay with for a while i have signed up for one hundred minutes in the air while this hundred minutes will not make me a flyer by any means i think it is well worth the while in that it gives me a little element of certainty in going abroad i will know if all goes well that i am not unable to fly the next day he wrote two flights this morning twenty-five minutes in toto the greatest sport i ever had wonderful work i did most of the work after we got up a safe distance having obtained a certificate of one hundred minutes flight and passed the necessary physical examinations he left for france arriving at bordeaux may thirty first and soon reported at avord for training end of section one from princeton to france stuart walcott's letters letters one through eleven one avord july fourth nineteen seventeen dear h my work here is going well although slowly those in my class ought to get out by october if nothing goes wrong there are some one hundred and fifty americans learning to fly now in france besides the ones the government may have sent over more than a hundred at this one school and the oddest combination i've ever been thrown with chauffeurs second story men ex-college athletes racing drivers salesmen young bums of leisure 
a colored prize fighter ex foreign legionnaires ball players millionaires and tramps not too good a crowd according to most standards but the worst bums may make the best aviators there is plenty of need for all of them there are lots of frenchmen here also and a big crowd of russians mostly happy youngsters having a very good time they're always in a hurry to get up in the air and are continually breaking machines in their necks the americans have an endless streak of luck in being able to fall out of the air and collect themselves uninjured from amidst a pile of kindling wood which was the machine as yet i haven't done any piloting in the air so can't talk very wisely about the glories and thrills of slipping through the ephemeral clouds all i have learned is that almost any kind of a dub can be a pilot but that there aren't a lot of very good ones the idea is to get enough practice to become a good one before arguing with the elusive bosch at a high altitude it looks over here as though there will be about two years more of war judging from what most people say it is to be hoped that after twelve to eighteen months we will be able to take france's place at the front for she deserves to be relieved and will have to be even now france is almost spent it will be england and the united states who will finish the war this war is a terrible thing but for america it is an opportunity as well i am glad that we have at least come into it and that it will be no halfway fight that we must put up the canadians have been about the best regiments in the war why shouldn't america be as good Stuart. two ecole de aviation militaire avord cher france friday july thirteenth nineteen seventeen you see it's friday the thirteenth my lucky day and i'm happy because the work is going well first i'll tell you about a smash i had a week or so ago the roller or roller class which i smashed in has the same machine as those that fly with a forty five p motor only it is throttled down and we are supposed to keep it on the ground just about ready to fly but not quite getting up a speed of about thirty miles per hour when there is the slightest wind we cannot roll because the wind turns the tail around and swings the machine in a circle a wooden horse cheval de bois i rode about the end of the list saturday and the wind had come up as the day got on work stops at eight thirty a m always because there's too much wind my first sortie or trip went okay with a considerable breeze on the tail but on the second there was too much wind and after i got going pretty fast around she went the wind caught under the inside wing and up it went smash went the outside wheel and a crackle of busting wood all the front framework of wood that holds the motor was smashed a pretty bad break the monitor was a bit mad and talked to me in a bit of french the next morning i was called in to see the chief of the belleroute school lieutenant de chavans a very nice officer he told me that my monitor was not satisfied with me that he had told me to do something cut the motor when the machine started to turn three separate times and that each time i had intentionally disobeyed that if anything like that happened again i would be radiated discharged from the school that was quite the first i had ever heard of it and i was so mad at the monitor that i could have kicked him in the head i tried to explain to the lieutenant but he never heard a word so i just gurgled with wrath and didn't do anything but yesterday we got another monitor who was a different sort the class after roller is decolle it is the same machine but one gets off the ground about a meter or two then slacks up on the motor and settles to earth it is strictly forbidden to decolle in the roller class this morning i had a sortie in the roller and all of a sudden noticed that i was in the air a bit managed to keep it straight and get out of the air without smashing the monitor said nothing so i decollated on all the sorties when i got out the monitor explained that it was strictly forbidden to go off the ground in the roller class that i shouldn't have done it and then asked me if i would like to go up to the other class whereupon consenting i am now in the decolle class leaving sixteen rather peeved americans who arrived in the roller the same time i did who can perform in the roller quite as well as i can and who will remain in the roller for some time yet they've no grudge against me however as it was only a streak of luck on my part later in the morning i had some sorties in the de Colaire and got up two or three meters the wind was too strong so my trips were a bit rough but nothing was damaged so hurrah for friday the thirteenth three july seventeenth nineteen seventeen the work has been going very well since last i wrote you which was only two or three days ago 
i told you about it last leaving the blessed roller i never was so relieved in my life the first evening in the decolle class i was requisitioned to turn tails and the morning after there was too much wind to work the decolle is the one where you go up two or three meters and settle down by cutting speed the first time i had three sorties in the wind bounced around a lot but did no damage the next time was first thing in the morning two meters up on the first four or five on the fifth strictly against orders i even had to piquet point the engine toward the ground a little which is not at all comme il faut in the decolle but these frenchmen are funny chaps sometimes they will get terribly angry and punish one for disobeying and again they will be tickled to death with it if i had smashed while doing more than i was told to there would have been a lot of trouble as it was no objection and the monitor personally conducted me to the piquet class with a very nice recommendation now there are two piquet classes one with a piece about a quarter of a mile long in which one is supposed to do little more than decolle get up about five meters and piquet un tout petit peu hardly at all after comes the advanced piquet with a much longer piece on which one can get up to one hundred meters three hundred feet on my first sortie in the piquet i was told to roll on the ground all the way so continuing my policy did a low decolle next i was supposed to do a two meter decolle so went up ten and piquet at ten sorties in the class one morning getting as high as i could about twenty meters and went to the advanced piquet that night last night four sorties there last night with a machine with a poor motor so it didn't get up over a hundred feet and this morning i did my first real aviating there was a bit of wind blowing so the monitor mr moses only let a lieutenant and me go up as we had gone better than the others last night first it was a bit rainy and always bumpy as the deuce air puffs and pockets which required the entire corrective force of the wing warp and rudder to overcome my last sortie was decidedly active the wind had developed into a bit of a breeze which is to a belleron like a rough sea to a rowboat two or three times i got a puff that tipped the machine way over put the controls over as far as i could and waited seemed a minute before she straightened the trouble was that the machine was climbing and therefore not going very fast if i had piqued it would have corrected quicker i had no trouble at all in making the landing hopping out of the machine i saw the head monitor rushing over to mr moses on the double shouting volubly in french and berating him severely i gathered that he had been watching my manoeuvres expecting something to fall every instant and that he strenuously objected to moses letting me go up work stopped there for the morning and it was very fully explained to me what the trouble was if i have some sorties there to-night i go to tour de piste flying field in the morning i may be on newport in two weeks i am now beginning to see the advantages of the belleron training there is a great deal of preliminary work on or near the ground and all other aviation training such as at newport news ninety per cent of the work is in making landings in piquetting down redressing at the proper moment and making gradual connections with the earth i haven't made a really bad landing yet and the reason is that i have been in a machine so much on and near the ground that i have sort of developed a sense or feel of it and almost automatically redress accordingly and settle easily also i can tell pretty closely what is flying speed because of the work on the rollers it's the same way with all the other students only i know it now from my own experience and this morning i began to realize that my hundred minutes at newport news was invaluable i not only found out some of the tricks of a master hand karlstrom but also developed a bit of confidence in the air an air sense without which i would have gotten into trouble this morning my bumpy ride this morning is absolutely invaluable i'll probably never have so much trouble in the air again because a fast machine or even a bailero with a good motor would hardly have noticed these puffs it was a bit risky i guess or the head monitor would not have been worried but now that it's over i know a lot more four dear blank you have certainly developed into a wonderful correspondent honest to goodness a letter you started my way about a month ago is quite the most satisfactory and amusing thing i have received since i've been over here based on practically no material yet it was alive with interest every line there's nothing like a finishing school education if i thought you could knit i would immediately appoint you as my marraine godmother 
for it's quite possible for one person to have more than one soldier and i am but a soldier of the second class in the french army as i understand it the chief duty of a marraine is to write letters you start at that in good style and to knit wool scarves which the devoted soldier hands to a french peasant woman to unravel and make a pair of socks out of many ale boys have wandered in upon us of late alan winslow wally winter george mosley and others also chester bassett late of washington and harvard university who i believe has the good fortune to be acquainted with you a very recommendable young man they tell me that cord meyer is aviating at some camp near by but not having any machines they have had to spend their time touring the country in a high-powered motor had a long and gossipy letter from pat the other day containing details of many weddings and engagements even unto young blank blank all my classmates are doing the same stunt how about being original and waiting until the war is over and seeing who of the competitors are left i quite expect to be but it's luck i'm trusting to there's a lot of war left in the nations of europe one can never tell i may come home on permission in the french uniform with a wing on my collar when the american air service is a little further along it may be that we will be taken over from the french army i finished up in one division of the school the other day and passed to another for brevet the test for a military aviator i sort of had the impression that i wrote you a few weeks ago about it but not being sure run the risk of repetition which if any i hope you will excuse this epistle is being written out at the pist flying field waiting for the wind to drop enough to fly and with me seated amidst a bunch of russians so if there are any superfluous iskis or ovages in this you will understand why the russians are great flyers in fact they know so much about it that they never listen to their monitors and as a result break more machines than all the other pupils combined a month ago five of them went to the next school for acrobacy and in a week every one of them had killed himself i pulled a bit of the same russian stuff in the spiral class of the Bellero. all the work is solo never a flight double command so one has to get instructions on the ground and follow them in the air i used my head and senses in performing my first spiral instead of shutting my eyes doing what i had been told and trusting to god the result was that i made one more turn than i expected to and that being quite perpendicular not at all comme il faut in a blade why something did not break has been the wonder of the blade school but nothing did and we got down all right another time i planted a cuckoo on her nose which is not at all encouraged by the monitors tis quite a trick to balance a monoplane on its nose on the ground but i did it quite vertical she lay with me in the middle struggling with the safety belt and wondering which way it was going to fall my final appearance in the bailiero school was likewise spectacular the left wing hit a hole in the air which the right one didn't naturally things tipped then they wouldn't straighten and the one thing to do was to dive to the low side i did but forgot to shut off the motor a very steep and fast spiral resulted in which i lost five hundred feet in a half turn in about two seconds i think all with the motor going to beat the cars i must have been traveling at many hundreds of miles an hour once again nothing broke but it was no fault of mine that it didn't sincerely stuart five august twenty fifth nineteen seventeen i started from my altitude test three days ago the requirement is one hour above two thousand meters i got to one thousand nine hundred and fifty meters and one cylinder refused to fire so i was forced to come down the next morning i tried again got to nine hundred meters and the magneto ceased to function thereby stopping all progress i glided toward home but didn't have quite the height to make the piste so had to land in a nearby field just dodging a potato patch a flock of curious sheep came around and carefully examined the machine getting considerably mixed up in the wires of the open tail construction and leaving considerable wool thereon when the mechanics eventually got the motor going i started off didn't get quite in the air before the motor went bad and then i ran into a bean patch gathering about a bushel of beans with the same tail wires yesterday morning i tried again climbed to two thousand and fourteen minutes and to three thousand five hundred meters eleven thousand five hundred feet in forty minutes i went up through some light clouds and when i got to three thousand 
three thousand five hundred to the top of my recording baryograph more clouds had formed and i was practically shut off from the earth nothing but a beautiful sea of clouds below me a very beautiful sight one other machine was in sight far below me below the clouds where the air was very much churned up keeping me very busy just as soon as the time was up i came down with a pair of very chilled feet making the two thousand meters in five minutes to the ground no work since then on account of bad weather this morning i attended my first catholic funeral that of the commandant of the school who was the victim of mid-air collision a very unusual accident the other machine got down safely though badly smashed everybody in camp attended the funeral in the chapel of the artillery camp next door i understood none of the service but the music by a tenor and a cello was excellent while the cortege was going down the hill to the cemetery a newport circled overhead very low for half an hour or more and dropped a wreath it was a very impressive ceremony i expect to start on triangle and petite voyage in a few days when they are done i will be breveted flyer in the french army then comes perfection work and acrobacy so it will be quite a while yet for me six august thirty first nineteen seventeen dear blank here it is almost september and i am still a dog gone elevé pilote verily every time i think of how the time passes along without results i go wild my complaint is caused by the west wind which has blown about twenty-five days during the month of august and seems likely to continue well on into september the only variety is an occasional storm for the past two weeks i have been waiting to start my voyages two trips to a town forty miles away and back and two other triangular trips about one hundred and eighty miles long each when they are done one becomes a pilote élevé and there is a great if subtle difference when the words are reversed an élevé pilote is the scum of the earth looked down on by mechanics pilots monitors and everyone else a pilote élevé can wear wings on his collar and is as good as anyone else he is permitted to fly in rough weather to take chances and is not in so much danger of getting radiated if he gets in trouble the proper thing to do on a triangle or petite voyage is to have something bust directly over a nice chateau make a skilful landing on the front lawn under the eyes of the admiring household and then be an enforced guest for a few days until one is rescued by a truck and mechanics one has to be very careful where the pont de moteur catches him lest he have to make his landing in a lake or on a forest which is apt to be a bit awkward one chap an american has been out on a triangle for two weeks staying at some country place and there are four others at another school near a big town waiting for weather to return reports give us to believe that they are having a much better time there than we are here between here and the point for the petite voyage a little bit off the route is the big future american aviation camp and also an artillery camp there are quite a bunch of fellows there quentin roosevelt cordmeyer etc i think every american that has left on his voyages in the last month has stopped there against all orders and been bawled out by the monitor one has to keep a recording barometer or altimeter machine a, a barograph during the voyages which indicates all stops one chap came back home the other day with a barometer record showing beyond the shadow of a doubt that he had made a stop of about fifteen minutes in route the monitor saw it and said allors all you americans stop off there i don't like it then the chap tried to explain how he had a pond and come down in a field out in the country somewhere fix the motor and come on home he almost got away with it but the monitor happened to snook around a bit and noticed on the tail very clearly written a good anglo-saxon name the name of the town and the date quite indisputable evidence i fully expect to have a pond there myself before long by the way to declare a short pause in my chronicle of aviation how about all those letters that are to follow if you try to tell me how good you are to your belgian soldier i refuse to believe a word until you treat me in the same way and i also refuse to accept any one as a marraine isn't that what you call these fairy godmother persons one is supposed to correspond with during the war and marry afterward how inconsiderate some of them are 
to take three or four soldiers just assuming that not more than one will survive however they may be wise to have more than one iron in the fire but my parenthesis grows apace i say i refuse a marraine until she approves her ability but let me see again does said moraine have to be a complete stranger it seems to me that is customary and also usually they are of different nationalities all of the foregoing weak line will be interpreted as a mere plea for that other letter i've never made this absence makes the heart grow fonder stuff at all even blank has given me up i remain to her only another of the forgotten conquests of the dead past this odd person bassett wandered in all dressed up like a patch of blue sky and i just had to let you know he was here with absolute confidence in each other's integrity we put our loving messages side by side by the way he is a good scout don't you think i have gotten to like him immensely since he has been here i never had a better time in my life than one evening in paris with chet however quiet the party he is the life of it it must be that i take my weekly shave in cold cold water with a dull dull razor oh happy thought tell the father and brothers hello from me also tell blank to drop me a line of what he's doing and when he's coming over steward seven september first nineteen seventeen the wild man in the newport was out again this morning giving someone a joy ride there is a long straight stretch of road in front of our piece and he came down that several times a nasty puffy wind blowing which bothered him not at all flying only two or three feet off the ground in front of the piece is a telephone wire crossing the road he came along the road one hundred miles an hour until almost on top of the wire and jumped up just in time to clear it by a few feet really beautiful work he goes all over the surrounding country flying low hopping over trees and houses sometimes turning up sideways to slip between two trees a bit too close together to fly through sometimes dragging a wing through the space between a couple of hangars and doing vertical virages just in front of them it doesn't seem possible that any man can be so much a part of his machine can do it so consistently accurate that he never misses for this chap lumiere has never had a match a chap named lofgren started off on one of his brevet voyages a few days before i got ready for brevet he got quite a ways along ran into a storm went above it got caught in a cloud kept on for quite a long way being drifted by a strong wind then came down through the clouds and found that they were only four hundred feet above the ground after a while he found a place to land and came down safely he went to a farmhouse got his machine guarded and tied down in the meantime word had spread over the countryside that an aviator had come down there and the entire population came out to look him over a grand equipage drove up with a count who lived in a nearby chateau he insisted that eddie come to the chateau and accept their hospitality there the fortunate ed stayed five days the countess talked english and also some house guests he hadn't brought a trunk so borrowed razor etc from the count went down to see the machine every day in the baronial baroche whenever he went to the little town in the vicinity all the kids followed him around the streets and when at last he left he was presented with a multiple of bouquets and had to kiss each and every donor he brought back pictures of the chateau a delightful-looking old place and numerous addresses eight at last the two weeks of wind and rain has ceased and now it is perfect weather a bit of a breeze and lots of sun for the last two days yesterday morning there weren't enough machines to go around so i did not work making the eighth consecutive day i hadn't stepped in a machine last evening i at last and with much rejoicing started out on my maiden voyage to another school about sixty kilometers away thirty seven point five miles it was delightfully easy nothing to do but climb two or three thousand feet and just sit there and watch the country unfold comparing the map-like surface of the earth spread out below with the map in the machine in good weather it is very easy to follow spot roads towns woods rivers and bridges railroad tracks get lost at high altitudes and are harder to find anyway one has to keep an eye open for a place to land within gliding distance in case of a pond always but the country is so flat and so much cultivated around here that it is absurdly simple 
i endeavoured always to keep some pleasant-looking house or chateau in range in case of trouble for the french are proverbially hospitable to aviators in pan lying to descending coming back yesterday evening the sun was pretty low and the air absolutely calm nothing but the drone of the motor and the wind the only movements necessary an occasional slight pressure on the joystick to one side or the other to keep the proper direction i came very nearly going to sleep it was so peaceful up there several times closed my eyes and swayed a bit as a matter of fact one is perfectly safe at that altitude anything over a thousand feet because the machine at least this particular type won't get into any position from which one cannot get it out within two hundred meters at most but nevertheless i hadn't tried any impromptu falls as yet this morning i repeated the same identical performance because for some reason we have to do two petite voyages and had much the same kind of a time as yesterday on the way home one cylinder quit its job and threw oil instead covering me from head to foot and clouding up my goggles so i had to wipe them off about every minute when i got back the mechanics decided that the motor had died of old age and would have to be repaired so i am again without a machine having watched a beautiful afternoon pass by from the barracks when without my luck i'd be working but with a machine and weather i can be finished tomorrow. two triangles to do about two hundred kilometers a hundred and twenty five miles each and i can do one in the morning and the other in the evening and then i'm breveted perhaps by day after tomorrow i'll start professione on newport i hope so nine since my last to father i have had some very interesting times first i finished my brevet with very little excitement made all my voyages and only got lost a little bit once then i saw two machines on the ground in a field made a rather dramatic spiral and steeply banked descent amidst a crowd of villagers and got away with it then found that machines belonged to two monitors who were bringing them from paris and had effected a pont de chateau being asked what i was doing i fortunately found a spark plug on the burn and got that repaired the rest of it was very easy a bit of flying in the rain which stings the face a bit but is not bad otherwise since i have been on the newport there are three sizes of machines on which one is trained starting with the larger double command and going to the smallest at pow we get another even smaller about as big as half a minute four times i went out with a ride bad weather crowded class and busted machines the same old story then last night i had my first rides with a monitor is rather oldish crabbed and new at his job a brand new aviator as you know when an airplane takes a turn it does not remain horizontal but banks up comme ça if you can interpret that illustration it shows signs of remarkable imaginative power allures one banks to take a turn and uses the rudder only a very little because the machine turns along when banked there is a sort of falling out feeling the first few times until one becomes a part of the machine to get back to the story this monitor does not like to bank his machine and sort of sidles round the corners keeping it quite flat and almost slipping out to the outside of the turn i've done many fool things in a machine and made many mistakes but never have i been so scared in anything in my life as when riding with this monitor a monitor is supposed to let the pupil drive as much as he is able but this bird never lets me make a move and when we got through told me i was too brutal i was never madder in my life and cursed nice american cuss words all the way home there's a fifteen kilo rod and a seatless tractor back to camp to improve a bad humor well this morning i saw some more rides impending and didn't like it so asked the chef de piste to put me with another monitor he had to know why and i registered my kick which practically said that the first monitor didn't know his business and couldn't drive that i was scared to ride with him the chef was a bit sarcastic and told me to take two rides with another monitor to show how i could make a virage i did it the way i've been accustomed to making a fairly short turn when we got down the monitor said patent american stunning or something like that to the chef the chef had meanwhile communicated my complaint to the first monitor and he was the maddest man i ever saw demanded what ce type là indicating me wanted said the virages i had just made were dangerously banked the monitor i was with didn't mind though 
then all three started arguing at once at me and i spelled all the french i knew about that time i thought of what you had just told me in a letter about trusting your latin which advice and remarks i have come to agree with very much my admiration for the french has waxed less daily and here i realized that i had very successfully made a fool out of the man who was supposed to be my teacher and he fully resented it then of all things the lieutenant without further remarks said i was to continue with my first monitor my heart sank into my feet i had visions of staying in that class without rides or with only rides and fights for months i rode no more this morning and what was my delight to find that this evening my bewhiskered pal had left on permission i got another monitor a fine one who put his hands on the side of the machine and let me do everything with a bit of assistance on the landing which is different from what i've been doing on the quadron seven rides and a finish the twenty-three metre to-morrow morning it wasn't very good but got by ten things for me are going all right have made progress on the newport since last i wrote and will fly alone soon as regards the u s army things are at a standstill until i get to paris which will be a week or so i hope to go to the front in a french esquadrille and in an american uniform some say it can be done some that it cannot it sounds so sensible that i am afraid there must be some regulation against it eleven september twenty seventh nineteen seventeen since last i wrote a regular letter considerable has taken place first i am now at pau having finished up a ward have sent postcards to father right along to keep track of movements after brevet was over i did not take the customary permission of forty-eight hours but went straight to work on newport d c double command one cannot learn a great deal riding with an instructor only about enough to keep from smashing and landing because one never knows when the instructor is messing with the controls when it's one's self there are five kinds of newports differing mainly in size the smaller being faster and more agile in the air being adapted to eccentric flying they are twenty eight twenty three eighteen fifteen thirteen the baby newport at a board i had about a week of d c on twenty eight and twenty three the numbers refer to size of wings with several days of no work then some days on twenty three alone and finally on eighteen alone the landings are a bit different from those of the machines i had been flying as they are faster and the machines are quite nose heavy in the air the nose heavy feature makes them fly themselves that is according to the speed of the motor the machine will rise and climb or pique and descend with never a touch from the pilot if the weather is not bad the newport will correct itself automatically from all displacements but in landing the nose heavy feature causes a great many capotages if the landing isn't done about right with the tail low over she goes on her nose or all the way on to her back it is a very common occurrence and has become almost a joke when a pupil capotes everybody kids him no one hurries over to see if he is hurt not at all he climbs out from under usually cursing and in ten minutes the truck is out to salvage the wreck it is astounding the way smashes are taken as a matter of course yesterday one chap in landing hit another machine demolishing both but not touching either pilot being worth some fifteen thousand or twenty five thousand dollars but no one seemed to worry it's very much a matter of course the monitor was a little peeved because he will be short of machines for a few days but that was all i've seen as many as ten machines flat on their backs or with tails high in the air on one field at the same time for myself i haven't capoted or busted any wood since the blériotes but i'm knocking on the wooden table now on several occasions it has been only luck that saved me as i've made many rotten landings well to get back to the diary after finishing at avord i waited around for two days to get papers fixed up requested and obtained permission and then decided not to use it and left straight for pau after fond farewells to the friends i had been with for three and a half months looking back i didn't have such a bad time at avord after all though i did get terribly tired of the living conditions my trip to pau i put down to experience i discovered one schedule not to travel by in future leaving aboard at two fifteen i got to bourges at two forty five and found that the train left at seven twenty nine fortunately there was another chap from the school on the train arthur blumenthal 
an old princeton football star whom i have gotten to know quite well so we managed to waste the afternoon together at seven twenty nine i started another half hour's journey at the end of which the timetable said that the train for bordeaux left at ten thirty this is all p m at this town there were some american engineers so i embraced the fellow countrymen in a strange land finished up a not very gay evening by attending the movies a most odd institution clouds of tobacco smoke obscured the screen and most of the action was around the bar at one side of the hall nobody was drunk but nearly every one was drinking and very gay this was merely saturday night in a small town of the provinces not in gay paris at ten fifteen i got in a first-class compartment and tried to find a comfortable position in which to sleep at two fifteen a m i had mussed up my clothes considerably lost my temper and not slept a wink then we had to change again the rest of the morning i sat opposite an american officer a queer old fogey and we tried to kid each other into thinking we were sleeping with no success arrived at bordeaux at seven a m and found that the train for pau left immediately so i missed out on breakfast too oh it was a hectic trip my idea of a very unpleasant occupation is that of a travelling salesman in france End of section two Stuart Walcott's Letters 12. October twenty second, 1917 Ah, blank! Once more I take my pen in hand to lay at your feet the burdens of an overwrought... How is that word spelled? Mind, said burdens being caused by a most unpleasant captain. Just because I was in Paris for a day and a half without permission, he handed me eight days of jail, and today, for nothing at all, he hauled me out in front of the entire division and got quite angered when i told him in extremely broken french that i hadn't understood a word but as the jail doesn't mean anything and doesn't have to be served i'm not worrying very much the afternoon is misty and there isn't a chance of flying so he takes particular care that nobody leave the piste though there is absolutely nothing to do there no chance to get warm or comfortable which at least gives me a perfect alibi for poor penmanship as I am sitting in a machine and quite uncomfortable. Thoughtless creature, so much like the rest of your sex, why did you not tell me where Albert was to be over here, or what he was going to do, or what service he was in, or at least that he was in France? I cleverly deduced the latter from your letter, but did not know where to find him. When I got your letter I was at Pau, not far from Bordeaux. Didn't I write you or postal card you from there? afterward at paris i talked to a few very dressed-up ensigns with wings on them somewhere walker is the only name i remember and they told me that blank was near bordeaux and in the same group with himself so if etc i might have gone to see the big boy yesterday i went to see billy and another classmate in an artillery camp the other side of paris they are officers of the u s a and live as such which incites in me much envy as i am still a mere corporal of france and treat it with no more than my due not quite as much as i sometimes think that was the expedition that brought the jail lots and lots of people are getting over here now i have seen high liger church and kelly craig who are about to become aviators somewhere porter guest just became brevident that is a licensed pilot and was considerably seen in paris shortly after no end of college friends are over here and even an occasional american girl is seen in paris no friends as yet your letter i asked at morgan harry's about miss blank and found that she is at the front in a hospital so i can't very well find her in paris i'm sorry as i would very much have liked to what one might call permanent people are very nice to know in paris i don't know anything about the front yet but if i'm near miss blank's hospital we'll try to get acquainted what you said about blank and his going i can pretty well appreciate there isn't a thing in the world to worry us unmarried and very independent young men over here if something happens to us it will bother you all back home a great deal more than us it's very very true that women have the heaviest and worst part of war i had to write a letter the other day to the mother of a pal over here who shot himself when out of his head a fine pilot and an exceptionally charming fellow how i pity his poor mother it's almost unbelievable the number of women one sees in black here in france 
thank god it can never become that bad at home for the war will never get so close to us as it has to the french i haven't the inspiration to compose an imaginative aeronautic thriller today about the experiences of a boy aviator since last writing have finished newport at a board, went to pow and there did acrobacy came here to plessis belleville and started spod now await assignment to an esquadrille which ought to come within a week haven't broken any wood since bellero days but have been a bit more rational and done about average good work the preliminary training is over combat training doesn't amount to anything till we get to the front i'll be in a monoplace machine surely so in my next you can expect to hear my details of combating the bosch at high altitude i'm beginning to hear that it's nothing but a lot of routine work few combats and pretty soon a frightful bore i refuse to believe it and hang on to romance for all i'm worth give my regards to a whole lot of people and tell them i haven't quite given up all hope of a letter though almost my friends as a group are not very strong on letter writing there are only a very few shiny exceptions like yourself and verily they do make of me the heart glad but enough of this tis bootless so i sign myself thine as of your steward thirteen escadrille spa eighty four sector postal one eighty one par a c m paris november first nineteen seventeen well i'm here in sight of the front at last to date i haven't been out there yet and won't for a few days more as they take lots of care of new pilots and don't feed them to the bush right away probably day after tomorrow the lieutenant in command will take me out to show me around the lines and after that i'll take my place in patrols with the others the work is exclusively patrolling establishing as it were a barrage against german machines and preventing as far as possible any incursions of the french lines as the big attack is over there is comparatively little activity sometimes one goes for a whole patrol without being fired on and without seeing an enemy machine anywhere near the lines during the three days i've been here the group has accounted for several boches without any losses whatever young bridgman of the lafayette esquadrille had a bullet through his fuselage just in front of his chest but suffered no damage except from fright there are several esquadrilles in the group a group de combat it is called all have spots which make it very nice the lafayette one twenty four is of our group and have adjoining barracks which makes it very nice i seem to repeat for us lone americans in french esquadrilles for we drop in there far too often and the first few nights i used the bed of the famous bill thaw's roommate away on permission did i write you that one morning he brought in whiskey to wake me up and my eye no sooner opened than my head was buried under the covers whiskey is a pet a very large lion cub which has unfortunately outgrown its utility as a pet and was sent yesterday with its running mate soda to the zoo at paris to be a regular lion they are a very odd crowd the members of the lafayette esquadrille a few very nice ones and a bunch of rather roughnecks their conversation is an eye-opener for a new arrival mostly about paris permissions and the rue de bray but occasionally about work and that is interesting nonchalant doesn't express it when bridgie got shot up as mentioned above they all kitted the life out of him and when he got the croix de guerre they had him almost in tears just because he's the kittable kind but in talking about the work for instance jim hall i peeked on him with full motor and got so darn close to him that when i wanted to open fire i was so scared of running into him that i had to yank out of the way and so never fired a single shot or Luffberry just mentions in passing that he got another bush this morning but those blank observer people won't give him credit for it he is fourteen official now and probably twice as many more never allowed him some days ago during the attack he had seven fights in one day brought down six of them and got credit for one which must be discouraging fourteen november fifth nineteen seventeen well blank here i find myself writing to you without waiting for the usual two or three months to elapse do you realize that it was over five and a half months ago that i left my native land doesn't seem near so long to me just at present i have about thirteen hours a day to write 
read the washington star and the new york times eat an occasional meal we only get two over here worse luck build fires in the stove and stroll for exercise the rest of the time is devoted to sleep a terribly hard life that of an aviator on the western front no appels meaning roll calls discipline or inspections only if there should happen to be a good day one might be wanted to fly a bit so far i have only been out here a week we have had perfectly ideal aviators weather nice low misty clouds about three hundred or four hundred feet up which quite prevent aerial activity and yet one is not bothered by mud or depressed by rain in the morning one awakes pokes his hat out the window says what low more luck a nice light roulard and he closes the window for a few hours more of sleep really i've done more resting the past week than most people do in a lifetime to get statistical i finished up at pau from where i sent you a letter n'est-ce pas a month ago and then spent two very unpleasant weeks at belsis belleville near paris at the big depot for the front waiting to be sent to an escadrille with nothing to do but a little desultory flying nurse the system food weather lodging discipline etc eventually my turn came and with another american i was dispatched to esquadrille s p a eighty four where we arrived after the usual delay passing through paris that's one nice thing about the country all roads lead to paris sent from one place to another it is a safe wager that one goes via paris and always takes forty-eight hours there and gets permission for it if he can there are a few frenchmen there still but on the streets one sees almost entirely american british or british colonial officers occasionally a french aviator and of course clouds of sweet and innocent young things yes nearly all of my classmates are over here and get to paris every once in a while so all i have to do is to sit at the cafe de la Pice, and if i wait long enough some one i know will surely come along well to get back on the track we eventually found ourselves members of le dit esquadrille spa eighty four one esquadrille of a group de chasse which means that we will have patrolling work to do mainly and not protection of observation or photo machines which they tell me is fortunate also we have good machines the best there are which might not have happened had we been sent to another type of esquadrille purely good fortune the much advertised lafayette esquadrille number one twenty four is a member of the same group is located near us and does the same work which makes it much pleasanter for lone americans we use their stove and tea of an afternoon quite freely as our quarters are new and not fixed up but say when we do get going everybody will be in to see us we'll have a cosy beautifully wallpapered room clustering about a stove the men of one twenty four are a rather good crowd not much different from any crowd of americans a bit rough but most of it affected because they're away from home very hospitable rather daredevil or hard-hearted whichever you wish to call it the way they talk about each other's narrow escapes coming falls the mistakes or misfortunes of departed brothers and there have been several and very mixed centering around lieutenant bilthaw of the french army who impresses me as being very much a leader in an unusually fine type there is one tough nut from a middle western siwash like college who is probably still ungraduated at twenty-seven and a quiet innocent-looking kid who seems to have just got out of prep school of course the tough guy tears the little one then there are a couple of old legionnaires rather superior and terribly tired of war quite unenthusiastic but i dare say congenial when one gets under their hide or fills it full of booze and jim hall the author chap quiet reserved almost simple in his lack of affectation and boyish in his enthusiasm gad how he wants to get his boche and he almost thinks he did the other day but it wasn't verified he followed him down from fifteen hundred to two hundred meters shooting all the time and thinks he must have brought him down did i mention above that i am at present in the status practically of a non-flying member on arriving at the front one is not rushed straight away to the cannon's mouth but rather allowed to get acclimated at first to have a few preliminary voyages to look around etc during my week here there has been little flying and i haven't even seen the front only heard the guns occasionally of my three flights two were just short tours de champs but the other never in my wildest blériot days did i do a wilder one 
coming from pau where i had tried some stunts i thought i was a bit of an acrobat second only to navarre guinemer and a few others so arriving at a safe height i started to go through the repertoire first came a loop which got around to the vertical point a quarter turn and then slipped ending in a vertical corkscrew or climbing barrel turn or whatever you want to call it then losing momentum and just naturally tumbling i didn't know what was going on only that it wasn't right they told me afterward after that came the renversement and vertical turns etc and not a thing came out lost i got lost thirty times and had to hunt all around to see where i was nothing went right and i kept getting madder and madder and poorer and poorer they were all laughing down below and wondering what was going on up there eventually the party ended one of the old pilots told me that that one flight equaled about thirty hours over the lines and the commander advised against a repetition of the performance and so i went and lay down two hours later i began to feel that perhaps i could stand on my feet again did you ever have mal de mer so now i really ought to begin to learn something having acquired the all essential first knowledge of ignorance which all good students should have and in the meantime perhaps i shall go and combat the wily hun said wily hun need not worry about my bothering him if he does not keep fooling around under my nose till i am ashamed not to go after him i am not bloodthirsty a bit especially till i learn to fly and the lack of combats isn't going to keep me awake nights for a while yet but the bunk mate seems to have gone to bed and it's almost ten a most unprecedented hour for me to be up so the end approaches kind remembrances as usual use your discretion and don't forget that long tale of washington social tidbits you spoke of gossip if you prefer as ever stuart the next day addenda your letter on just arriving home has been with me some time and truly brought joy to my heart in this desolate land the desolate seems to fit in though not applying to the land in question at all chester snow is aviating under the auspices of the u s government i last heard from him in a postal written on the last stop of the last triangle of his brevet so he should be through training before much longer the other chester bassett is still at avord so i cannot deliver your note to him your other question referred to the army i am in and is easily answered by saying that the u s a has as yet done nothing but talk about taking us over us now refers to upward of two hundred americans i think either in french esquadrilles or well advanced in the french schools constantly all summer we have been going to be transferred in two weeks another quiet non-flying slightly rainy day has passed this isn't perhaps the most ideal spot in the world for a winter resort from the point of view of comforts but considering the ease of conscience because one is not in the position to be called imbosque it is really not half bad it's starting to rain again rather harder i wonder if the roof will keep out water yours etc b s w fifteen november tenth nineteen seventeen evening you know november in france i've been here almost two weeks now and am still a la entrainement that is i haven't started in to do any regular work yet only five times have i been able to fly in two weeks but i've got my own machine and mechanic everything is in order and i've been assigned to a patrol the last two mornings when it rained tomorrow again at eight fifty with four others patrol for one hour and fifty minutes at about fifteen thousand feet back and forth over our sector sometimes over our own lines sometimes in bolshe i'm getting very impatient to get started in what few flights i've had i've been working on acrobacy a bit and am gradually learning a few simple things twice i stayed up a little too long and had to lie down a few hours afterward almost seasick i like spa eighty four very much indeed the frenchmen there are much more regular fellows than most of those i've been with in the schools wertheimer a sergeant is a sort of informal and unadmitted chief of the sous officiers it is that he speaks english and has helped us a lot in getting started etc very much of a gentleman he is and understands a bit anglo-saxon customs and eccentricities always gay and an indefatigable worker 
we have all been arranging the one big room of our barracks dining room reading room and probably eventually american bar the walls are covered with green cloth green paper of two different shades and neither quite the same as the cloth red cloth on top as a sort of frieze and red paper the ceiling is done in white cloth to keep in heat and light in the room a monumental task it has been especially as materials are hard to get and expensive vertum as vertimer is called and de bort have done most of the work de bort is also chef de popote which means housekeeper and a very efficient man for four francs per day we are fed amazingly well especially when one realizes that we are near the front in a country which has had three years of war de bort hasn't the pleasantest manner in the world at times but usually is very agreeable willing to tell me things about flying or the esquadrille always ready to work and a dependable man in the air and verber who rooms with vertum he speaks a little english has a great deal of trouble understanding it but is picking up wears a monocle all the time because he's got a bum eye carries a stick and has an extremely eccentric appearance but withal is very agreeable and a very valuable man he has the habit of taking long trips all alone far into germany just to see what is going on pinot is the name of the little roly-poly chap everyone calls bull bull who used to be a mechanic and now is a very good merry pilot he has a great pension toward Pennard. is violently but not all objectionably non-aristocratic is forever laughing or kidding someone walks on his hands to amuse people and is the delight of all the mecanos de moldre is a very quiet sort of schoolboy type who has been a pilot of biplanes and reconnaissance machines for a long time he came to the esquadrille recently with a record of two boches as a pilot of a biplane that is his machine-gun man did the shooting and they both get credit and a few days ago brought down a german in flames his first as pilote de chasse there are two others away on permission whom i don't know yet sixteen somewhere in france november thirteenth nineteen seventeen dear father campbell was in the lafayette esquadrille and they are a member of the same group as spa eighty four so i have asked them about him he was on a patrol with another chap they attacked some boches and when it was over the other chap was alone campbell was brought down in german territory and so reported missing i believe that the chap he was with has seen and talked to campbell's father or some close relative since another chap named bulky was brought down in similar circumstances about the first of september ten days ago word was received from the american embassy that he had communicated with them a prisoner in germany there are many similar cases where men brought down with crippled machines or wounded escape destruction by a miracle the only sure thing is when a machine goes down in flames or is seen to lose a wing or two for instance there are two officers in the group who are in the best of health and daily working several months ago they were on patrol together collided in the air one cut the tail rigging completely off the other and they separated one without a tail and the other with various parts in a tail mixed among the cables and struts of one side of his machine they both landed in france one on his wheels followed by a capotage or somersault turnover the other quite completely upside down then a term in the hospital and back they are again kenneth marr an american had the commands of both his tail controls cut in a combat the rudder and elevator leaving him nothing but the aileron the lateral balance control and the motor he landed with only a skinned nose for casualties and got a decoration for it another chap in an attack on captive balloons dracons dove for something like ten thousand feet vertically and with full motor on thereby gaining considerable speed as you can imagine he came right on top of the balloon shot and to keep from hitting it yanked as roughly as he could flattening out his dive in the merest fraction of a second imagine the strain on the machine when he got home all the wires had several inches sag in them the metal connections of the cables in the struts and wood of the wings had bit into the wood enough to give the sag machines are built to stand immense pressure on the underside of the wings in some aerobatic manoeuvres i was trying the other day i made mistakes and caused the machine to stall and then fall in such a way that the full weight was supported by the upper surface by the wires which in most machines are 
supposed merely to support the weight of the wings when the machine is on the ground yes the spot is a well-built machine the nearest thing to perfection in point of strength speed and climbing power i've seen yet of course it's heavy and that's why they put a hundred and fifty to two hundred and thirty horsepower in them the other school that of a light machine with a light motor depending for its success on lack of weight rather than excess of power may supplant the heavier machine in time i can't tell so as anyone who knows has said right along there is a long way to go in the development of the j n or even the little triplane before american built planes get to the front of the bombing game i don't know anything at all yesterday there was a review here in honor of guidnamer and decorations for the pilots of the group who had won them three americans received the croix de guerre members of the lafayette esquadrille luftberry the american ace carried the american flag presented to the esquadrille by mrs mcadoo and the employees of the treasury department besides the two aviation emblems of france he was called to receive his decoration for having in the course of one day held seven combats descended one german plane in flames and forced five others to land behind their lines which means that he has officially credit with one his thirteenth and that the other five though probably brought down do not count for him because there were not the necessary witnesses required by the french regulation being the bearer of the flag he was a very worried man to know what to do with the flag when he should go up to get his medal till one of the fellows in one twenty four the lafayette came to his rescue for a military review it was decidedly amusing aviators are not very military the chief of one of the esquadrilles was commissioned to command the mechanics who were plain soldiers with rifles and steel helmets for the occasion he is a bit of a clown and amused the entire gathering kidding with the officers the pilots of each of the five esquadrilles were in more or less formation most of them with hands in their pockets for it was chilly and presenting a mixture of uniforms unparalleled in its heterogeneity every branch of the service represented and endless personal ideas and dress because of the occasion repose has been granted to the entire group for the afternoon another group taking over our patrols so that after the review everyone had the afternoon to waste a sunny day which is quite unusual this month within a half hour every machine that was in working order was in the air forming into groups and then off for the lines just looking for trouble a voluntary patrol they call it which opened my eyes a bit to the spirit in the french service after three years of war word from paris that those americans in the french service who have demanded the release to join the u s a have obtained that release which probably means that all we wait for now is the commissions this afternoon i took another trip with one of the old pilots to look over the sector we stayed over france and didn't get into trouble although there were a lot of boches around hope to really get started soon an amusing one this morning two pilots from the group were on patrol and attacked a single german about two kilometers behind the german lines they completely outmaneuvered him he got cold feet and started for the french lines giving himself up the funniest part about it is that the machine gun of one of the attackers was jammed and he couldn't possibly have hurt the boche just had the nerve to stay and throw a bluff they came back to camp just before dark this evening one of them flying the german machine and the other guarding him in a spot the machine is an albatross biplane finished in silver with big black crosses on the wings and tail a really beautiful thing it flew around camp for several minutes before landing it is the second machine that has been scared down since i've been out here seventeen at the front somewhere in france november seventeenth nineteen seventeen at present things are hopelessly slow on account of bad weather so i have had a good deal of time to write and naught to write of i still am waiting for my baptism of active service which is assigned for each day and held up on account of fog low clouds or rain in the afternoon it usually lifts a little not enough to fly over the lines but sufficient to permit a little vol de entrainement a practice flight around the field i've been taking every chance to learn to fly practicing reversements vertically banked turns ninety degree nose dives etc two days ago we had a very interesting mimic combat in the air the boche machine which has been captured 
and Espad, both driven by very clever pilots, maneuvered for position during fifteen or twenty minutes at a thousand feet or less, back and forth over the field, doing almost every possible thing in the air, changing direction with incredible rapidity, diving, climbing, wing-slipping, upside-down dives, everything under the sun. Two of them were at it again today in two spots, just maneuvering. What a lot there is to learn. When I got through acrobacy at Pau, I had the impression that that kind of stuff was relatively easy. Now I know different. For the present, I am working on the system of try one thing at a time, get that fairly well, and then commence another. And small doses, 10 or 15 minutes for an acrobatic flight, not more because one can easily get dangerously sick in a very short time. Not that there is any particular peril in getting ill in the air, only it's beastly uncomfortable. 18. At the Front, Somewhere in France, November 30th, 1917. The rumor at the Lafayette Esquadrille this evening is that they have been at last transferred. Of course, they had similar rumors many times before. For myself, I am becoming rather indifferent very well satisfied here except for weather and getting what i came over here for father mentioned something about a monitor's job after i had experience at the front my present inclination is decidedly against the idea there is no job in the world i like less to think of and there are plenty of people who want to get comfortably settled in the rear so let them say i and may they enjoy it it is not a very pleasant job as a retirement after a period of service at the front it is another matter of all people i can think of i have the smallest right to an embusque job at present so here i hope to stay whether i fly with an american or french uniform i don't care very much at the present moment i'd rather get a boche than any commission in the army but one cannot always tell about the future perhaps after a few good scares i'll be ready to jump at a monitor's job 19. At the Front, December 1st, 1917. I tried to give you all some idea of the strength of a spot in a letter a while ago. At home people speak of a factor of safety, meaning the number of times stronger the machine is than is necessary for plane flying. The spot is made so that a man can't bust it no matter what he does in the air, dive as far and as fast as he can, and stop as brutally as he can. It stands the racket. Of course, motors do stop, and if it happens over a mountain range, well, that's just hard luck. I've had a few patrols since last I wrote, one at a high height, 4,000 to 4,500 meters, considerably above the clouds which almost shut out the ground below. Wonderfully beautiful sight, but beastly cold, and a couple when the clouds were low and solid. The patrol stays at just the height of the clouds, hiding in them and slipping out again to look around. If it gets below, the enemy anti-aircraft guns pepper it whenever near the lines, and at a low altitude that is rather awkward, so the patrol shows itself as little as possible. It's lots of sport to try to keep up with the patrol. Be behind the chief of patrol, see him disappear, and then bump into a fog bank, a low-hanging cloud, and not see a darn thing, then dive down out of the cloud wondering whether the other guy is right beneath or not shoot out of the cloud and see him maybe five hundred yards away going at right angles then bank up and turn around fast and give her the gear full speed to catch up and so on see a boche regulating artillery fire start to maneuver into range and zip he's out of sight in the clouds and the next you see he is beating at far back of his lines not very dangerous this weather but lots of fun twenty december third nineteen seventeen dear blank Thanks for the merry, merry wishes for the gay Xmas season, and I'll try to remember them when the day comes along. Sundays and holidays are not very much noticed here at the front, except that on Sunday the mechanics all get full of pinard and song and devilment, the pinard, meaning cheap red ink used by the French in place of drinking water, is of course responsible for the two latter. In the villages the entire male populations likewise drinks much wine and everyone man woman child dog and domestic animal parades the streets dressed up all like a picture book applying mostly to women and children occasionally they cross the sidewalk but the middle of the street is the place to walk one sunday i went to church the first time since last easter i think to attend the mass given for the departed brethren of the esquadrille 
the chapel is in a little town a few miles from our camp along in the middle ages or anyway a long time ago there was a beautiful cathedral there now the town is insignificantly small the front of the cathedral is standing almost in its entirety and the walls for a little way back dwindling down into glorious ruins and finally tumbled masses of rock and stray pillars where the back wall once stood there now runs a little brook i almost called it bubbling but it happens to be an unusually dead and not over clean little stream the chapel is a place about as big as a minute snugly in beside the big front wall of the ancient cathedral the service was meaningless to me what wasn't latin was french i followed the fellow in front of me and didn't miss it once on the getting up and down fortunately militaris don't have to kneel i suppose because they appreciate the fact that most of them wear breeches made by french tailors but they fooled me once what must have been the village bell what a village passed a little button bag affair and baby blue ribbon and gathered up the shekels i dropped mine in and horror here comes the young sister with an identical bag and asked for more and i was unprepared and had to turn her down amidst my blushes i thought she was working on the other side of the house as we used to do at evening service and to this day i don't know why they took up two collections though it has been explained to me three times in french have had some very pleasant trips over the german border present not 1914 have watched a few archies busting at a safe distance away and seen some specks which were bosch planes but i'm not ready to write a book yet yesterday morning we had the first sortie at six forty five daylight a solid bank of clouds over the camp here at two thousand meters the lines are parallel to a river and a few kilometers north the edge of the cloud bank was over the river sharp as if cut by a knife and all germany cloudless we slipped out from under it and back on top just in time to see the sun get over the horizon almost as far away as rims which we just cannot see the river and canal were just silver ribbons on a black cloth stretching for miles due east under us we could make out the ground on one side and the clouds on the other and to the west the cloud bank continued to follow the lines a gloriously beautiful panorama the cloud bank stayed nearly the same two hours we were up from a distance above or below a cloud is just a big soft quiet cushion of cotton fluff but near to it it is a seething irregular tossing furious jumble of mist we saw a few boches far from their lines an hour after we were back they said that luftberry had just brought down another machine his fifteenth in flames he was using a new machine and the gun was not properly regulated seven balls were in each blade of his propeller yet it held together and brought him home i was down at the lafayette hangars talking to bill thaw and here comes the mighty man in a hurry from reporting his flight with fire in his eye he got to the old machine and off again for the lines at noon he brought down another which hasn't been officially homologue but is none the less sure for that thaw brought down one this morning they are doing well these men of the american esquadrille still french however though shortly to be transferred we hear may your xmas be a happy one and the new year and those to follow bring you ever better fortune than the last one stuart twenty one chalon sur mar december eighth nineteen seventeen dear blank i got the sunday star a few days ago and there was that same picture and blank staring me in the face a very nice write-up i thought what a bunch of bigwigs they did gather together we packed up bag and baggage yesterday and flew off to a new place and here we are waiting for the baggage to catch up i have grave fears that there may be some fighting one of these days and if so i think it will be about time for me to get out of this war cheerio stuart twenty two chalon sur mar december eighth nineteen seventeen yesterday we were awakened at six and told that we were going to move out bag and baggage at two so now as new barracks were not ready we came down here last night and have been seeing the sights of the town since it is full of americans ambulances doctors y m c a workers everything but fighting men which i trust will see before long stuart End of section three. The final combat. On December twelfth, while on patrol, Stuart Walcott met a German biplane carrying two men. 
three cable reports agree that he shot down and destroyed the machine about two and a half miles within the german lines he then started back for the french lines and was overtaken by four albatross german planes he was overcome and his machine went down in a nosedive within the german lines it being assumed that either he was shot or his machine disabled there was still a hope that he might have escaped death inquiries were at once instituted through the american red cross and the international red cross with the result that on january seventh a cable came from the international red cross stating that it was reported in germany that s walcott was brought down during the afternoon of december twelfth near saint souple and that he was killed by the fall End of section four the final combat Stuart Walcott, a biographical note written by his father. Benjamin Stuart Walcott was sturdy and self-reliant as a boy and very early developed strong personal initiative, good sense, and courage. I find in my notebook under an entry of July 6, 1905, a few days before Stuart's ninth birthday, that with him and his brother Sidney I measured a section of over 10,000 feet in thickness of rock with dip compass and rod in northern montana and that that night we slept out on the continental divide after a sandwich apiece for supper on july sixteenth went up the gordon creek with stuart and cut a few trees out of the trail and on the next day stuart assisted me in collecting fossils from the middle cambrian rocks in nineteen o six stuart helped in gathering cambrian fossils in central montana and in recognition of his effective work one of the new species of shells was named after him micrometra paterina stuarti he also assisted in british columbia in geological work during the summer of nineteen o seven and in nineteen o eight when twelve years old he was placed with one packer in charge of a pack train operating in what is now the glacier park montana and in southern british columbia on this trip one morning i heard faint rifle shots and upon overtaking the pack train found stuart shooting away with a twenty two gauge rifle at a grizzly bear which was some distance down the slope below the trail on reminding him of the danger he said he wanted to drive the bear away to prevent a stampede of the animals both at home and in school his actions were largely influenced by a determination first to know what was the right thing to do and guide it by this habit when it looked as though the united states would enter the european war he decided that it was his duty to take part in it when the lusitania was sunk he felt strongly that the united states should take a positive stand in favor of the freedom of the seas that the rights of americans should be protected even if it meant war and he was ready to fight for it in common with the majority of youth of america he had the feeling that it was a patriotic duty and privilege to offer personal service to the nation when its ideals and motives were assailed by a foreign foe he first offered his services to the signal corps and received a temporary assignment realizing that training as an expert aviator could be more quickly obtained in france than in this country he went to france and enlisted in the french army with the expectation of being transferred later to the american forces this would have been done prior to his being shot down within the german lines on december twelfth had he not been awaiting action by the united states aviation service in france in examining and arranging for the transfer of the american aviators in the french army to the service of the united states throughout his life the dominating thought was to be of positive service wherever he might be placed at the same time he was thoroughly a boy and enjoyed a frolic and fun as much as any of his companions he prepared for college at the taft school expecting to enter yale and passed the examinations for that university before he was sixteen upon further consideration he selected princeton largely because of the preceptorial method of training and was a senior when he decided to enter the service of his country stuart was an unusually well-balanced boy and youth his moral convictions were sound definite and expressed by action rather than words charles d walcott End of section 5. End of Above the French Lines by Stuart Walcott.